All right, so I want to talk about a few different types of exoplanets so that you can categorize the discoveries you make. Um, NASA classifies exoplanets in this way um, by their radius compared to the radius of Earth. Um, some of these are familiar, right? We have uh, terrestrial planets, which have less than 1.2 Earth radii. There's a category called super Earths, which we don't have any of in our solar system. Those are planets that have somewhere between 1.2 to 2 Earth radii and are, um, have a rocky density. Um, Neptune-like planets are between 2 and 6 Earth radii, and then gas giants are more than 6. For exoplanets, because you can't always measure their mass, um, the transit method only gives you the size. And so if you want the mass too, you have to measure them also with the radial velocity method. So for a lot of exoplanets, we know their radii, but we don't know their mass. And so therefore we don't know their density. So for that reason, it can be hard to um, separate what is a super earth versus what is a Neptune-like planet because um, for our solar system, our Neptune-like planets are in a size range that we would consider super earths if we were to measure them in another solar system. So without knowing their density, we can't know for sure um, what they're like. So in general, though, we would say that we expect terrestrial planets with this radius size to be rocky and small. We would expect Neptune-like planets to be gaseous and sort of small as compared to gas giants, which would be gaseous and enormous. And then super Earths are basically rocky and large, hence their name. All right. If we look at the number of planets by the type that they are, um, we can make a histogram like this. This is a figure from your book. Um, these just kind of count up the number of planets in each radius range. So starting with the very smallest planets and moving to the largest gas giants. And then up here, this shows you the planet sizes in our solar system that would correspond to each bucket. So Venus and Earth would fall into this bucket. Neptune and Uranus, Uranus would fall into this bucket. And if we consider um, what types of exoplanets they are based on their radius range, um, this is what we would see. So there are very few terrestrial planets that have been discovered. Um, part of this is just because they're harder to measure. Um, there are a reasonable number of super Earths that we've detected and a large number of Neptune-like planets. And then finally, there are very few gas giants. So these Neptune-like planets um, and super Earths, these you know, are not represented by any planet in our solar system. For us, Neptune and Uranus are on the high mass side of these Neptune-like planets, but there's a lot more that are like them, but lower mass. So it seems like we're missing in our own solar system, the most common type of exoplanets, which is a little strange. <laughs>